What if the legend was true? What if there was a gateway to the birthplace of magic? A magic that turned mortals into gods and heroes, imbued with powers from another place and time. One that could turn allies into enemies. And ravage the world with war. It offered hope and the power to save those you love. Would you face annihilation? For a chance to start anew? If the fate of the world was in your hands. What if the legend was true?
Nuyans have never found fear in the thought of death. How could they? Their patron deity is the goddess of the hereafter. Death means reuniting with her. She who, as a living goddess, gave her life to save all people. With the last wisps of energy in her divine soul, she sent all races to a new land. Everyone lost their old kingdoms, their old gods, and their old heroes. But none felt this loss as keenly as the followers of Nui. Some would have even preferred to follow her to the hereafter. I was one of them. On their new continent, the Nuians found nothing but ancient, untamed wilds. They dreamt of their magnificent civilization back on Aurora. But their reality had shrunk to leaky lean-tos and rocky fields that would not yield. The elemental specters that had ruled the area for eons tormented Nui's chosen endlessly. They reigned from an ancient labyrinth hidden in the forest. The powerful Archmage Solzrian led an assault on the maze, wresting control from the spirits. The elemental specters retreated. They knew that the owner is always he who holds the key. Solzrian built a grand castle over the labyrinth, declaring whoever conquered it would be king. Following this rule, the Nuyans reclaimed some former glory and learned to love their new land. However, roads remain smooth only for so long. A young upstart shunned the labyrinth and rallied an army to conquer the lands he desired. Even the two greatest Nuyan cities fell. He consolidated power, dubbing his kingdom two crowns, and forged a new kind of peace. Until tragedy struck again, a royal assassination. The Nuyans struggled to carry on. None realized that a dark secret had infected the kingdom, and that was the problem. The Nuyans wasted time battling each other when their real enemy was this tumorous darkness. The Nuyans cried out to their goddess for answers, but received nothing in return. The statues they'd carved simply gazed down at them with a cold, stone benevolence. No other race could ever understand that pain. My pain, the longing for Nui. But no matter what, they are still children of the goddess. Some are even marked with her love. As for me, I will keep my promise to protect them. They just need to remember. The war that began centuries ago is not over yet. The elves had always lived in glory. They had never been defeated. Then, a new day dawned. The Grand Elven King, Aranzeb, led his army into an ill-omened battle. He felt it was the last chance to save the war-ravaged land of Aurora. Aranzeb had known Kyrios, his enemy's leader, for decades. However, any affection between them had long vanished. Hate was the only emotion they shared. Hate as well as hurt. When Kyrios finally slew Aranzeb, a dagger of betrayal pierced every elf's heart. Bards had long sung of the beauty of the elf's forest and the sophistication of its people. But that single defeat changed their fates forever. Their forest raised, their palaces reduced to rubble, the elves became refugees. Cloaking themselves in seclusion, they turned their backs on everything, save their memories. Throughout centuries, 
elven culture has remained frozen. Resentment and anger are passed down through generations like well-polished stones. All young elves devote themselves to the pursuit of revenge, training only in battle. Would Aranzad be happy to know his people choose to live like this? To abandon all hope of king or kingdom until Kyrios pays for his transgressions? Such questions are considered deeply treasonous. The elders are now all warriors, studying the art of bloodshed instead of philosophy. Their sole purpose is preparing their people for the coming war. Still, they can only do so much. The true future lies in the hands of the young, and secretly, more question the destiny of their race. One youth in particular. He discourages elves from forsaking all other learning. In order to focus only on the past. He knows that at times change comes only through oblivion. But elves have too good a memory. They need to learn that sometimes you must forget in order to live. An ancient bard's tale once dubbed the Firin, the children of the Gale. Firin kids learn to run before they can walk, a must for a race as restless as the wind. Usually settlers record their lives or build towers in the ground, but not the Firin. They see no need for hearth or home and require little more than dew to moisten their throats and meat to fill their bellies. Centuries ago, when war tore Aurora, the hero Taiyang led the Firin onslaught. It's said that when he fell, slain by his best friend, the plains burst into flame in protest. When the Firin fled Aurora, they left their grief behind. The wind of their new range brushed their tears away. Other settlers were puzzled by the cat people's feral ways, especially the wealthy Harami. Their suspicions jinxed peace from the start. No Harami was ever praised for his genial nature, and the clash with the Firin came swiftly. Though the Children of the Gale claimed more victories, their opponent was an entire empire. Worried with advanced technology and trained fighters. To stand against such a well-oiled machine, the Firin had to build their own empire. They called it Temi, and for the Harani, victory became even rarer. Fighting their swift, fierce opponents was like fighting a storm. The Harami backed off. Meanwhile, the Firin grew accustomed to their homestead and began assimilating Harani ways. The Harani bided their time, waiting for the Firin to forget how to fight like the wind. This time, when the Harani struck, their domination was absolute. The Temi Empire shattered like ice, sending shards of Firin back to the wilds. But the wind does not stay quiet forever. Nomads again, the Firin found strength in the plains. They left their grief in the Temi ruins and let the wind brush away their tears. Their power and might rose like a thunderhead. Hundreds of years passed. Seers announced the birth of a new great Mara. He was to lead the Firin back to the plains of their ancestors, on Aurora. Just as Taiyang had prophesied. 
The key will be to keep the history of Temi from repeating itself. To reclaim the plains, not by building an empire, but by embracing the wild nature of the wind, by embracing the spirit of Taiyang that still lives in you all. Harani never fight a battle they cannot win. Even centuries ago, during the war between gods and heroes, the other races were destroyed. But the peoples now called Harani were smarter. They knew when to fight and when to pull back, when to survive. Though their palaces on Aurora were raised to dust, this one people remained intact. The goddess Nui tried to save everyone caught in the war, regardless of race. But neither fighting nor fleeing side by side could turn such disparate empires into a family. The survivalists built a new kingdom in their new lands. But again, it was destroyed. Now by an upstart prince, did they take revenge? Again, no. This prince was powerful, and survivalists do not fight losing battles. They burned their broken flags, left their temples to the wilds, and changed their dynasty. Reborn as Harani, they began building a new and grander kingdom. Surviving and flourishing is the ultimate revenge. Enemies must watch you rise above them. The newborn empire contained barren savannas, verdant plains, icy peaks, and sun-baked plateaus. It was the largest empire built by any race since the Great Exile. It came to rival Aurora in both beauty and prosperity. Then, disaster. The Empress died and her sole heir vanished, Rival factions split the Empire. Many abandoned their homes in the jungle capital. It wasn't seen as a risky move. True survivalists can survive anywhere. Perhaps criminals like the Shadowhawks are the other side of this coin. They too do whatever it takes to survive, to profit, to flourish. They will deal with anyone, from king to beggar, knight to thief. What most Harani don't know is that this crime guild carries their true name. On Aurora before the war, the most glorious and legendary survivors were known as Shadowhawks. <laughs>